Everyone that actually lives near um, the forest or dense bush needs to be aware that they're going to get it sooner or later, unfortunately. And that's been proven this year with the amount of fires we've had and the amount of properties we've lost. The only thing I can say is luckily this year we haven't lost many lives, which is great. Compared to 2009, um, I think we've only had uh, you know, basically a handful of lives lost, which is good. So people seem to be taking more or paying more attention to us when we're going out doing meetings and advising them what to do. When you're preparing your property, we try and get them to go and get it done early. Don't leave it till the last minute, which is a lot of people do that. They tend to leave it till the last minute and run around like silly people, forget to do things and forget their families also. A lot of that happens all the time. Main thing is vegetation around your property. If your house is out in the scrub, you need to try and keep it down low. I understand people like to live out in the bush areas, but you're going to be very, very prone to those fires if they come in. And looking at some of them this year, the way it's burnt, as I said, being in it for so long, I've never seen a fire burn so hot and so fiercely. When you look at the bush around this year, there's just nothing left of it. It's just basically raped the trees. There's just twigs sticking up there. Luckily, they're starting to bounce back a little bit with the weather we've had. But the way the fire burnt and the speed it burnt, a lot of people didn't have a chance to do much. This is an interesting one. A lot of people don't realise this is what gets most of the places. Embers, heat and flame. Now, embers. Everyone knows what an ember is. You start your fire with sticks, little sticks and whatever. Six mils, six mil diameter or smaller, or it can be bigger. Depending on the conditions, embers can go for many, many, many miles. And I mean many miles, kilometres, I should say. I'm back in the old days, aren't I? We had a chap come to our fire station many years ago. I think it was the 06 fires that come up over the top. No, the Caledonian fires, which is earlier. A fisherman came in and he was coming up with his extinguishers to get them repaired and he had a handful of embers and we were joking with him, he said, oh, a bit late to clean your spout out, wasn't it? He said, no. He said, I was fishing offshore, 50 k's, and this is what landed on the deck of the boat. Now that Caledonia fire come from way up, way over the other side of the mountains and he was getting embers landing on his boat that was still warm, some of them, 50 k's offshore. So from the shore to his boat was 50 k's. I'm not sure exactly how far inland the fire was, probably 30 or 40 k's as a crow flies. So when you think about that, they can fly a long way. They can be anything from little tiny bits of leaves to bark. And the worst thing is that candle bark, as we call it, that hangs off trees. It floats along. It gets sucked up in a vortex and it floats through the air and just keeps going and all of a sudden just drops out. It can drop anywhere. That's what causes most of our house fires and, and buildings to be destroyed and start spot fires all the way through. So that's why you've got to have around your property very well prepared so that if anything like this does happen and you're not there, there's a good chance it will just go out or smoulder away. Going on to heat, again, your property, need, your, your, your buildings, they need to have a decent area from the heat. People say, oh, the heat, you know, not going to get us. Well, who's had sunburn? Everyone's had sunburn. Radiant heat. Radiant heat comes from the fires. And I often say to people, okay, ladies and some gents, you cook a cake in the oven at 180 degrees C. You open the oven up, it's pretty hot, isn't it? You get out there near the fire, you're looking between anywhere from 800 to 1200 degrees C with a, with a fire front coming through. That's the heat coming from it. So you can imagine the distance you've got to be from that fire to stop getting radiant heat. So your, your, your building's the same. The less uh, build up of trees and stuff around your property, the better off you're going to be because uh, the radiant heat will get you every time. And again, the flame, direct flame contact, there's not much chance, especially if it's coming through at a great rate of knots. Your, great, your direct flame contact is going to take everything in its path. So uh, you need to you know, basically design a garden, have your trees cleaned, 
uh, the area around, around your trees, if you like your trees, which we all do, uh, have it cleared around underneath and uh, to stop the actual heat down low. If you've got nothing underneath your taller trees, you won't get much going up the trunks. So the, the, the further away if we can have those, the better. The basics, um, even if you plan to leave early, uh, you need to have your property prepared because if you're hoping to come back to it uh, and you're just going to go and leave it as it is, well, you might as well forget it. Um, you can do a lot of stuff through the year, especially getting your, 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 your grasses and all that down. I know when spring comes, everything starts to grow pretty quick, but this year the fire season was early again. It started off in, in September. Even I think we had some fires in August down here because it was that dry. Uh, and they burnt very well. And even now, even though we've had a couple hundred mil of rain, things are still pretty dry. So um, to, to reduce the risk, you need to get out there and basically start now and keep going right through until the summer comes again. Things to do before and during the warmer, in the, during the warmer months. I mean, mature trees, they can help shield from uh, radiant heat and embers. That's if they're a certain distance away from the, from the fire. Uh, you'll find that they um, absorb a bit of the heat, even though they do get burnt. You know, when you look at the trees that have been burnt this year, uh, probably a lot wouldn't have helped that. Keep your grass down within 10 centimetres, 100 mil. That, that's another big help. People tend to stack stuff on their decks and that around their houses. Who has a wood fire at home? Yep, where do you stack your wood? On your, on your porch or somewhere? No? Oh, that's good, I'm glad to see that because a lot of people say, oh yeah, we've got a big pile there, we pile it up during, the, during the autumn, ready for winter, and they just leave it there right through the year, all the year. Now that's a great place for embers to land. More fuel for the fire to get going. Keep your gutters clean. Okay? A lot of people forget about their old gutters and go, oh, hang on, we've got some grass growing in our gutter, maybe there's some rubbish in it, we better clean it out. So that's what we need to do. Don't use mulch around your gardens. I know we like to conserve water and keep our gardens going, but it, it's the new thing of, if you're going to have mulch around your garden, you expect to get a fire there and expect to hopefully not lose your house, but a good possibility you will. Use pebbles or rocks, something like that. Can't burn. Okay. Large shrubs right up close to a house, another bad one. Don't have them too close. If you can, the further away you can keep, keep them, the better. Because the less direct flame contact you can have near your property, near your building, the better off you're going to be. Okay. Um, yeah, your wood piles, the further away you can have your wood pile, the better. If you've got a woodshed, keep it in that. Just basically over the winter, sun, winter time, just use your wheelbarrow to, to, to bring a wheelbarrow load up at a time instead of having it all stacked up around your, the base of your house. Uh, no overhanging branches near your house if possible. That's going to fill your, your gutters, of course. Uh, get rid of the dry leaves and the grass, twigs and loose bark as much as we can. I know when you get to autumn, the, the, the leaves keep on dropping and we get a few dry months the leaves will drop, drop again, and that's because the trees are trying to save the moisture. They drop leaves to, 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 to survive. But the more we can rake up and do, the better we'll be. When you're doing um, clean-ups, you need to check with your local CFA and your local council about the laws and restrictions on what you can do and what you can't do. Uh, in, the, in the suburban areas, build up areas of the most towns in, in, in most shires, you are not allowed to burn off. Even if you, you want a permit or anything, they won't give you a permit because it's not allowed in, in the suburban area. Uh, you're better off taking it to the tip or uh, going, uh, putting it in your, in your green waste bin. In the other areas, if you do do any burn offs that you're allowed to and you don't need a permit, still register your burn. We get that many people that just go and light a fire in their backyard and somebody's got the jitters up next door and ringing up the fire brigade, somebody's got a fire going in their backyard. It takes you 30 seconds to ring up the 1800 number, which is a free call to register your burn with Vic Fire. Because somebody rings up the fire brigade and says there's a fire at 
number two O'Neill's Road saying Lakes Entrance, they'll say, oh, it's all right, we've got a, that's registered, that's, that's, that's a burn, no problem, that's okay. So we, they don't have to call out the fire brigade. When you do do burning off, check your weather forecasts. A lot of people think, oh yeah, we'll just go and do it. But they haven't checked to see what the forecast is going to be, whether it's going to be windy, hot, whatever. Now, we're talking about embers. You do a burn off, what's going to happen if it gets windy? Uh, what else is there? Yeah, make a fire breaker with no less than three metres around your fire to, you know, you're doing. It's basically standard rules when you're going out camping. You're going to build a, a fire pit three metres around, three metres above. Keep it clear. Good chance that it won't, uh, won't jump out anywhere. And make sure you stay there and watch it. Too many people light their fires. Oh, we're going to do something else and forget about it and come back and it's burnt half the backyard or burnt the fence or burnt the neighbour's yard. So it doesn't make people too happy, I can assure you. And always have a good supply of water, hose, buckets, whatever. And the other thing is uh, you need to know what you can do and what you can't do without a permit. If you uh, live in a rural area, um, lots of times you don't need a permit, other times you do. Uh, and it's depending on where you live with, uh, yeah, it's up there, the, 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 the two rules that apply. Uh, there's the 1030 rule, which means you can have completely clear all the way around your house for 10 metres. And then the other 30 metres, you're allowed to take out the low undergrowth stuff so that you can mow. I've got to leave all your big trees and everything, but you can take out all the, the low um, bracken and uh, stuff like that that, you can, that, that, that that doesn't burn, that creates a, a fire going up the tree. So you've got the 1030 and the 1050. Some shires have a 1030 rule, so 10 metres and 30 metres, and others have 10 metres and 50 metres. So, so you check with your local council for that to make sure you can actually do that. CFA has a lot of stuff that we can have as handouts, and also if you go on the CFA website, um, you can go onto that and, and pick up um, some of the information. There's heaps and heaps and heaps of it, but look, the main ones, um, there's a brochure on leaving early, leaving early, which has got a template in it for doing a plan of what you're going to do if you're going to leave. And there's another one called the Suburban Garden. It's, it's a brochure on what you do in, your, in, in suburbia um, to uh, make your, your, your property safe. Uh, your Guide to Survival, it's a little blue booklet, very, very good. Has things in there to do, um, a, a detailed photo and list of information you need to have, um, especially if you're preparing to leave. A lot of people forget a lot of things in, in the rush, so this is why we're saying we should be getting things organised early. Don't leave it too late. You know, having a grab bag with a little bit of food and water in it, maybe a couple of spare bits of clothing, but your most important things is like your shire rates, your um, insurance papers, uh, what's your passport, licences and all that. And one thing that everyone does forget, and I come across it all the time, they forget their medications. Most important for the oldies, they forget their medications and they go to come back to get it and they can't get into their property because the road's been shut off or whatever so they can't get back and they haven't taken their script with them to go and get another one refilled. So very, very important that um, you have a, a bag with all your bits in it. Even a battery radio. People say, oh, what do we want a battery radio for? Well, what's one of the first things that go out when a fire comes through? Power. So we need a battery radio. Always have a battery radio with us. There's another one there called uh, your guide to property preparation. What we've just been talking about goes through in detail of what you can do, how you do it. Uh, another one, landscaping for bushfire. That's more in the areas again of the, that are on the uh, urban fringe. And so at the Princebury, um, 
very small on these. Uh, don't get caught out, it's called another brochure, don't get caught out. And look, there's hundreds and hundreds of things to go by, but these basic ones I've mentioned here are probably the best ones to have.